Right now on News 3 this morning, Saturday, the last days of spring are going out with a bang with heavy rain, hail and flooding. A look at some of the area's hardest hit overnight and the weather threat set to hang around this weekend. Plus, construction season around the city. The lane closures and detours starting today that could impact your drive to and from downtown. Your news starts right now. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good morning and thanks for joining us for News 3 this morning, Saturday. It is June 15th. I'm Josh Breder with meteorologist Chris Reese and we'll get to Chris's forecast in just a second. An active night in and around the Madison area. Powerful thunderstorms knocked down large tree branches, even nearly splitting one tree in half. Just before 1230, the National Weather Service issued a flash flood warning for all of Dane County. And the flooding was evident with Madison police citing reports of covered streets, stalled vehicles and downed trees citywide, causing a strain on city emergency services. The storms also caused chaos at the Dane County Regional Airport. Just after 11 last night, four planes were circling over northern Iowa and Illinois, waiting for the storms to pass. One flight from Denver and one from Newark were diverted to Chicago, while the others landed in Madison shortly after midnight. Although we're in the clear from that line of storms, the heat and humidity is on the rise again today. The Dane County Sheriff's Department reminding folks to stay cool, stay hydrated and stay connected. Chris, how hot are we talking? Josh, we're talking heat that will be near record territory and we'll get to that in just a moment. First, we'll start with the line of storms that did move through overnight. Here's the past six hours. You notice how once that moved over south central Wisconsin, it really just began to expand and blossom right over Dane County. That's the reason for the flash flooding that did move on through. It put down quite a ton of water right around the Madison area, anywhere from two to four inches of rain within just a short amount of time. In fact, on my way into work this morning, I did pass some flooded roadways. All the rain out of here right now, some lingering showers just to the north and east and then back to the extreme north and west. We see some lingering showers there, but for the most part, we're going to get rid of the shower activity today and turn up the thermostat. Well, Really, we should be turning it down inside our homes anyway. We're going to see temperatures in the low 90s today. By Sunday, it's the mid 90s and we'll keep the heat and humidity around into your Monday. It's going to be feeling like some triple digit heat. So do make sure that you are prepared for that right now. Temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s around town. Those dew points, of course, are already high as we go through the rest of the day. We'll top out right around 90 degrees. All that rain that we had overnight will actually help to keep us a little bit cooler today, but it's going to be even more humid. So do prepare for a muggy start to your day. As far as traffic goes so far, so good all across town. Things are moving smoothly. We'll continue to watch how the traffic goes throughout the day. No major delays showing up on our maps at all. Some slow spots where some high water still lingers. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. Right now, there are quite a few projects and events going on that could affect your drive this weekend. We'll start with closures on West Washington Avenue. Westbound traffic heading away from the Capitol won't be able to go straight through Proudfoot Street and Regent Street. This is the area behind the Kohl's Center, close to the budget bicycle shop. Those lanes will be closed through 7 a.m. Monday, so crews can replace concrete there. On the other side of Capitol Square, East Mifflin Streets will be closed starting at 8 o'clock this morning between North Patterson and North Brearley Streets. This is ahead of tonight's Steely Dan Doobie Brothers concert at Breeze Stevens Field. Northbound North Patterson will be also be closed starting this afternoon between East Washington and East Mifflin Street. Both are expected to reopen by 4 a.m. tomorrow. Also in downtown Madison today, you'll want to keep an eye out for people running across the street with canoes. It's the 39th annual Isthmus Paddle and Portage Race. Canoers paddle for a mile loop around Lake Mendota, then take off on foot from James Madison Park across the Isthmus to Lake Monona. From there, they paddle for two and a half miles to the finish line at Ol Olbrick Park. So, of course, expect some traffic delays. Runners will then be carrying their canoes from James Madison Park along Hamilton Street up to the square, then along the northeast side of the Capitol on Pinckney Street. From there, they'll head down King Street to the John Nolan Drive Blair Street intersection to launch their boats again at Law Park. You'll want to avoid these areas from 9 a.m. to 11 this morning. And it's one of the more risque summer traditions here in Madison. The World Naked Bike Ride is also making its way through the downtown area this morning. This is the ninth year for the event. That ride starts at 11, but participants haven't announced where they'll start. Riders usually go around the Capitol, so if you're planning a farmer's market trip with the kids, 
heads up or maybe heads down. Developing this morning, police are investigating what caused a house explosion in northern Wisconsin. It killed one woman and injured two others Friday. Authorities say the home in Cable, Wisconsin was blown apart and engulfed in flames. A woman died and right now her husband is in critical condition. A firefighter was also injured, although not seriously. This morning, an investigation is underway into the DeForest Chief of Police. Village staff members tell us Chief Dan Furseth has been pay on paid administrative leave since May 23rd. They say he has been fully cooperative in the investigation. The village hired someone to investigate after a YouTube video surfaced showing what appears to be Furseth making racially charged remarks about a group of black men who are going to stake and shake. Village Administrator Steve Falgren says the video is actually 10 years old or more. It was posted on social media site two and a half years ago. Right now, police are asking for your help finding a man involved in a possible child enticement incident last weekend. They say the suspect approached a group of children near a park in McFarland and asked if they wanted a ride. McFarland police released this sketch of the man. He's described as white between 30 and 45 years old with black partially shaved hair, a beard and a lip ring. Police say he was driving a white Dodge Caravan when he approached a group of young children in the Red Oak Trail and Leanne Lane area. According to police, the man asked if the children needed a ride without attempting to force them into the vehicle. This case is kind of unique because um, it may be difficult at this point, based on what we have, to file charges for enticement. But certainly we want to find this individual, interview them, find out why they did what they did, and um, you know, try to prevent that from happening again. If the suspect is found, police say it will be up to the district attorney whether to press charges. Right now, Madison Mayor Paul Soglin is floating the idea of a $17 per vehicle city registration fee, although he isn't even sure if he supports the idea yet. The fee would cover transportation costs and free up general fund dollars to cover an expected budget shortfall next year. But Soglin says it's a regressive tax, something he's never supported. He says the city may have no choice but to consider it to cover the costs of basic city services, and they need to start talking about now if they need that money for next year. But we've reached a point here because of all these previous capital commitments and all these previous commitments to expand services for which we don't have sufficient funds. I think it's got to be an option to consider. The $17 fee would come on top of a recently enacted $28 county wheel tax. State law says it must pass the council by September 4th to be in place by January 1st of next year. Just about 5.08 on this Saturday morning, the heat and humidity are rising here in town and we have several alert days ahead. Here's a live look over the Capitol this Saturday morning, set to be a scorcher at today's farmer's market. Chris is in next with your first alert forecast. And there are several shows and movies you can check out this weekend to escape the heat. Will has your three things to watch. The news is back in the morning right here on News 3 This Morning, Saturday.
Oddly enough, after the showers and thunderstorms that moved through overnight, it's kind of a beautiful and tranquil morning. I'm listening to the birds chirp. You've got clear skies all around. That'll make for a nice sunrise later on. But we do have to remember today is actually an alert day due to the heat and the humidity that are going to be moving into town. It'll feel anywhere from 95 to 102. So make sure you're staying hydrated and reducing that outdoor activity today. We do have a heat advisory in play for all of South Central Wisconsin that extends all the way to the Lake Shore and back to the Mississippi River Valley. We're going to keep that around until we get you through Sunday. We zoom out just a little bit. The Twin Cities actually have an excessive heat warning for the heat that'll be there, and they're not the only major metropolitan area with that. The St. Louis area also under an excessive heat warning with heat advisories expending pretty much all the way down the Mississippi River corridor into portions of northern Mississippi. So it's high Hot, but we are not the only ones that are going to be dealing with the heat today. Here's the heat index right now. Ultimately, it doesn't feel too bad out there. Some places already do feel like 80 degrees. This is what we're going to watch throughout the day. This map is the one that's really going to show you that heat, especially as we get you into the afternoon, really because the humidity is factored in as well. Check out dew points well into the upper 60s, low 70s showing up. This is the the point where you step outside and it's just oppressive. You don't really want to be outside due to that humidity. 69 degrees here in Madison right now. Clearing skies taking over after the showers and thunderstorms that moved through last night. Seven days as you work your way back to the west and as the sun comes up, these temperatures are prepared to take off rather quickly. We're going to watch that happen. In fact, by the time we get you towards lunchtime, temperatures will be in the upper 80s. Then we get you to 90 into the afternoon. Even overnight tonight, we'll still see temperatures hanging in the 70s and 80s. It'll feel like 90 by the time we get you towards lunchtime, 95 by the time we get you later on into this afternoon. Here's what happens by the time we get you into your Father's Day, feeling like 99 degrees. So this morning, temperatures warming from 70 to 85. We get you into this afternoon. Do expect temperatures to be right around 90 degrees. Alert days lasting through the first few days there. Rain chances arriving on Tuesday. Then we'll finally cool things down as well. Temperatures in the low 80s through the next 10 days. I'm ready for a cool down. I'm ready for that cool down too. We haven't even experienced the warmest of the heat, but I'm sweating thinking about it and I just cannot wait till that cold front on Tuesday. Definitely good to think smart this weekend. Absolutely. All right, Chris, thank you. Actress Millie Bobby Brown has left Twitter over cyberbullying. The 14 year old Stranger Things star deleted her account after she was targeted with a hurtful hashtag and meme. Last year, a Twitter user whose account has since been suspended spread a rumor that Brown was Islamophobic. The rumor led to the hashtag take down Millie Bobby Brown in a barrage of negative claims linking the actress falsely to homophobia. Gregor is ready to shine. He's set to star in Doctor Sleep based on the novel Stephen King wrote as a sequel to The Shining. McGregor will play Danny Torrance, the boy from The Shining, who's carried out the trauma of events at the Overlook Hotel into adulthood. If you're looking for an escape from the heat this weekend that doesn't involve leaving your house, you're in luck. Our Will Loper has this week's installment of Three Things to Watch. Should we return my blue jacket? Yes. And after a very intense conversation with their saleswoman that ended with both of us in tears, I got you a full refund. I want it back. Absolutely. Now streaming on Netflix is the romantic comedy Set It Up. We wanted to shut down the elevator for a few minutes so two people could fall in love. Whoa, who's this guy? You need to go, sir. It's go time. Oh, my God. This is how it always starts in my nightmare. Uh, uh, what are you doing? What is he doing? Stop doing that, please. Stop, stop that right now. I need to stop be that. free of this. Two underpaid employees work to match make their bosses and hopefully get the raise they deserve. We know everything about them, but they like what they don't like. We are the men behind the curtain. Does Rick have good Yankees tickets? No. He watches from the bleachers like a common peasant. Yeah, of course he does. Set It Up is streaming on Netflix now. We're full-on parent trapping. No, we're not. Okay, I think I've seen the Lindsay Lohan classic enough times to know that we're full-on parent trapping oh. hard. I think I know where my dad went. That's right in the middle of the Devil's Sea. It'll be an adventure. Death is not an adventure. New on home video this week is the Tomb Raider reboot. There's an organization called 
Trinity. It's looking to start a global genocide. Alicia Vikander stars as Lara Croft, a globe-hopping, arrow-shooting woman who must save the world. I've been on this island. Your father, he put me here. Now I see the likeness, the intelligence, the recklessness. Tomb Raider is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Really? I have a lot of catching up to do with my dad. Good grow, son. That's my boy. So long, buddy. Oh, you're a great dad. Yippee! And there's plenty of movies featuring fathers and their children to choose from this Father's Day. I am your father. But why not bond with dad over an adventure in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Dad! Oh, dad! Oh, dad! Ah! Head for the fireplace! Oh. Sean Connery and Harrison Ford star as father and son who must save the world from the Nazis who want to take the Holy Grail. The quest for the Grail is not archaeology. It's a race against evil. If it is captured by the Nazis, the armies of darkness will march all over the face of the earth. Do you understand me? This is an obsession, Dad. I never understood it. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Those people are trying to kill us! I know, Dad! Oh, it's a new experience for me. It happens to me all the time. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Loper for News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Boy who was separated from his family. Found a wolf. Separated from its pack. And here's the new trailer for the Ice Age adventure Alpha about a young hunter and an abandoned wolf who learn to rely on each other, the origin of man's best friend. The survival story finds its way to theaters August 17th. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes, and Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> and you don't have to wait any longer to see the super-powered Parr family back in action. 14 years after the original, Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, and the whole family are back in The Incredibles 2. The first studio animated film of the summer is ready to make its mark. Analysts give the superhero sequel a chance to break the debut record for an animated movie set by Finding Dory at $135 million. 519 this Saturday morning, it's a new boat landing that everyone can enjoy. The new disability-friendly lakeside pier that you may want to check out this weekend. We'll have a preview ahead. And two years after a gruesome construction accident, a Wisconsin man whose arm had to be reattached is now recovering and sharing his story. A lesson in perseverance and positivity when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues.
Today, just the start of several alert days that we do have in our forecast, mainly due to the heat and humidity. In fact, as we go through this afternoon, we'll watch heat indices rise anywhere from 95 to 102. So make sure you're reducing that outdoor activity and staying hydrated. Here's how the timing works out on that. Temperatures in the 60s right now. We'll watch what it feels like in the 70s rise through the morning. By the time we get you into the afternoon, it'll likely feel like 95 at the peak heating, and that's just here in Madison. Places to the west going to feel a lot warmer. And then as we get you towards your Father's Day Sunday, we could add 8 to 10 degrees to those heat indices. So make sure you're prepared for the heat this weekend. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. With a hot weekend in store for southern Wisconsin, you might want to check out a new boat landing at the Dane County Park. The new landing is on Fish Lake at Lucier County Park. It features more stalls compared to the old landing, an ADA access parking, and an ADA access path to the boat pier. So this helps open up um, a beautiful park that hopefully more people will be able to discover and come and take advantage of. Cost $620,000, 420000 of that comes from Dane County, and the additional funding comes from a DNR grant. The county is looking at improving Crystal Lake in the future. Two years after a Black Creek Wisconsin man's arm was severed in a highway construction incident, he's telling his story and thanking the doctors who reattached his arm. That man is Tim Schroeder, and he could teach us all a lesson in positivity and perseverance. Reporter Gabrielle Mays shares his road to recovery. I can do this, and I got a little nerve pain, but you go here, and I jump. And my whole hand in the palm is really bad. Tim Schrader still feels pain in his arm, but he remembers a time when it was a lot worse. Probably about 15 times I wish they would cut it off because of the pain was so bad, but you just live through it. Schrader's been in the construction business for 30 years, but that all changed two years ago while working on the 441 expansion project. We were working on the beam slipped out and cut my arm off. First responders managed to apply a tourniquet to Schrader's upper arm and put ice on the portion of the arm that he lost. Shortly after the incident, he ended up at ThetaCare. Surgery lasted about five hours as doctors reattached Schrader's arm. When there's an injury like this, the artery will be damaged over a, a, a big segment, so we'll, we'll need to, to only use the artery that's good on either side, which leaves a, a gap. Surgeons used a vein from Schrader's leg. Dr. Matthew Butler says reattaching a limb comes with risks. That is not always an easy decision to make. It can actually be potentially dangerous and life-threatening uh, in the wrong circumstances. Doctors say Schrader's had a remarkable recovery, but the process hasn't been easy. I mean, even playing with my three grandchildren, I used to sit there and roughhouse them and lay on the floor, put them up in the air, put them up on my arms and lift. I can't do that. And that's what really hurts me. Despite the challenges, Schrader doesn't have any plans to give up. I'm not going to quit. In Nina, Gabrielle Mays, Fox 11 News. Schrader says he's grateful for his doctors. While he can raise his arm and move his wrist, he's still working on gaining control of his hand and fingers. Time now is 526. Still ahead this morning on News 3 This Morning Saturday. We're running through this morning's top stories, including the road closures that could make your trip to and from this farmer's market a little longer. Plus, the lesson learned from this week's primaries that could spell danger for candidates who voice their opposition to President Trump. We're looking ahead to the midterm elections when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns.
Right now, the dangers of opposing President Trump. After a slew of primaries, more and more candidates are learning that crossing the president has consequences. We're looking ahead to what that could mean for the upcoming midterm elections. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good morning, 5.30. When now, welcome to News 3 This Morning, Saturday is June 15th. I'm Josh Breider. We'll get a check of today's hot and humid forecast with Chris in just a moment. But first, let's get you caught up on this morning's headlines. An active night in and around the Madison area with powerful thunderstorms knocking down large trees, even nearly splitting one tree in half. Just before 1230, the National Weather Service issued a flash flood warning for all of Dane County. The flooding was evident with Madison police citing reports of covered streets, stalled vehicles and downed trees citywide, causing a strain on city emergency services. Right now, there are quite a few projects and events going on that could affect your drive this weekend. Westbound traffic heading away from the Capitol on West Washington won't be able to go straight through Proudfoot Street and Regent Street. This is the area behind the Cole Center close to the budget bicycle shop. Lanes will be closed through 7 o'clock Monday morning so crews can replace concrete there. On the other side of Capitol Square, East Mifflin Street will be closed starting at 8 o'clock this morning between North Patterson and North Burley Streets. This is ahead of tonight's Steely Dan Doobie Brothers concert at Bree Stevens Field. Northbound North Patterson will be closed starting this afternoon between East Washington and East Mifflin. Both are expected to reopen by 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. Also in downtown Madison today, you'll want to keep an eye out for people running across the street with canoes. It's the 39th annual Isthmus Paddle and Portage Race. Canoers paddle for a mile loop around Lake Mendota, then take off on foot from James Madison Park across the Isthmus to Lake Monona. From there, they paddle for two and a half miles to the finish line at Ulbrick Park. So, of course, expect some traffic delays between 9 and 11 this morning. It's a good thing that race is happening early in the day. It's going to be a hot one out there as we join meteorologist Chris Reese. That's right. It is a good thing that that race is early in the day. It's also a good thing that it wasn't too early with the showers and thunderstorms that came on through overnight. A lot of that now moving out of the picture. Here's a live look. You can see that we still at least have a little bit of some lingering cloud cover out there, but that will essentially drift out as we get through the rest of the day. 69 degrees right now. Clearing skies taking over at the airport. Dew points, though, starting to reach the upper 60s. Those will continue to rise through the 70s as we go throughout the day. That means it's going to feel a whole lot warmer, feeling like 90 by the time we get you towards noon. By the time we get you to the afternoon, it'll likely feel like 95. Check what happens as we go into your Father's Day Sunday. By the time you're waking up, it will already feel like the low and mid 80s and we'll warm up about 20 degrees on the heat index scale by the time we get you into the afternoon for Father's Day. So do be prepared for the heat. Speaking of heat, you also want to make sure you're looking out for pavement buckling along the highways, which are moving smoothly right now. So that is the good news. There are no big issues to report all across Dane County. So if you have to be out and about, do know that no big things are going on. Everything should take you your normal time. So that is good news for your Saturday We'll continue to track that heat and humidity. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. Right now, the State Department of Transportation is reminding drivers to keep an eye out for buckling pavement this weekend. The DOT says it's difficult to predict where the buckles will, ha will happen, but the problem is most common during the first major heat waves of the season. With this heat wave, be sure to get your forecast on the go with our Channel 3000 weather app. Our accurate 12 hour and 10 day forecast, all for free, available right now in the App Store. This week's primary elections have come and gone, but they may be an important sign of what's to come this November and in 2020. Speaker and Wisconsin native Paul Ryan is brushing off the Trump effect, but for other politicians, it is unescapable. Tom Foreman looks ahead. I'm running for Congress to get things done, not to go on CNN to bash President Trump. In South Carolina, Republican Katie Arrington rode her praise of President Trump to a swift primary victory over incumbent Congressman Mark Sanford, a Trump critic. The final push coming three hours before the vote. Mark Sanford has been very unhelpful to me. Vote Katie. It may have cost me an election in this case, but I stand by every one of those decisions to disagree with the president. Thank you, Virginia! In Virginia? Want to stand with President Trump? There is only one choice. 
Corey Stewart took the Trump train to victory by adding tough talk on immigration to his already controversial support for Confederate memorials, prompting celebration from the White House and sadness from a former lieutenant governor. I am extremely disappointed. This is clearly not the Republican Party I once knew. And just a week ago in Alabama, another incumbent Congress member, Martha Roby, was forced into a runoff fallout from her criticism of Trump. At the Capitol, Republican Speaker of the House Paul Ryan is trying to brush off the Trump effect. That's just what happens in, in contested primaries. But while just over 40 percent of Americans approve of the president's performance, among Republicans that number is more than twice as high. Donald Trump's popularity with Republicans is unprecedented. We're in a strange place. I mean, it's almost... Uh, uh, you know, been a, it's becoming a cultish thing, isn't it? Tennessee Senator Bob Corker complains that now his party won't even back measures it supports unless Trump does too. We might poke the bear. The president might get upset with us as United States senators. For some Republicans, the trend is a seismic, unwelcome, and unwise shift. But in the primary winner's circle, the message is different. Get over it. Get in line get used to it. We are the party of President Donald J. Trump. The next election in Wisconsin, the party's primaries is scheduled for August 21st. The nationwide midterm elections are set for November 6th. 536 right now, it is Father's Day Eve and spending for the June holiday is expected to hit near record levels. But as always, there are those last minute stragglers. If you're among the crowd still shopping for a gift for dad, you're in luck. How you can find some last minute Father's Day ideas and what other people are spending their money on. That's just ahead on News 3 this morning, Saturday.
It'll be a warm and humid afternoon with sunshine taking over. Most folks will see air temperature highs in the upper 80s and low 90s all across town. We go over to the western pinpoint cities. That's where temperatures will be a little bit warmer. Would not be surprised to see these temperatures be even warmer than the model forecast being put out. As of now, we go to the north even still. You're going to have a lot of folks in the upper 80s and low 90s. You factor in the humidity. It is going to feel a whole lot warmer. By the way, these temperatures are indeed in record territory. In fact, the forecast 90 for today, the record 93. But as we get you into Sunday, the forecast 94 with another record of 93. So this could be record breaking heat that we have through the weekend. But the good news is once we get through that heat Sunday and one more day on Monday, a very nice cold front is on the way. So let's just get through the weekend before things finally feel like a Wisconsin summer. Josh. All right, Chris, and here's a way to beat the heat. Barrett the polar bear getting in some laps at the Henry Vilas Zoo. We recorded this on our zoo cam on Friday, but he'll likely be out there again today trying to stay cool as temperatures are expected to reach those 90s this weekend. 541 this morning, Father's Day is just a day away, and a just released survey shows people are dropping major cash this year, with spending expected to reach near record levels. In this morning's Consumer Watch, Mary Maloney has a closer look at the numbers. $15.3 billion. That's how much people will likely spend this Father's Day, according to a new study from the National Retail Federation, which says rising consumer confidence is leading to another near record holiday. This year's projected spending would be second only to last year's projection of $15.5 billion. According to the survey, 77% of Americans will celebrate Father's Day this year. The report also found the biggest spenders are people between the ages of 25 to 34, and they're likely to spend an average of $188 per person. So what are they buying? According to the survey, clothing, gift cards, and consumer electronics are the most popular gifts. And people will mostly spend their cash at either a department store or shop for gifts online, which is why many online retailers are out with hot deals and steals on everything dad would love. So go ahead, splurge a little. After all, Father's Day is all about treating dad and showing him how much he means to you. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. And if you haven't decided what to get your dad this Father's Day, you still have time, but not much. Coming up in our 8 o'clock hour of News 3 this morning, we'll share some last-minute Father's Day gift ideas for any budget. 543 right now, looking for something to do this weekend? Well, we've got you covered. It's a musical weekend in the city of Madison, from a magical performance to a history-making one. The sights and sounds you won't want to miss. Your weekend at 608 is next on News 3 this morning, Saturday. But first, let's look at who's three today.
Heat advisories have been issued. They take effect at one o'clock this afternoon. That extends all the way from the Mississippi River Valley over to the lake shore that does include us here in Madison and all around Madison. We'll zoom out just a little bit. Minneapolis has excessive heat warnings. Heat advisories back all the way through Iowa and then you take in the Midwest as a whole and you'll see these heat advisories really extend far to the south portions of northern Mississippi under the heat advisories. Now there you'd expect it, but I share this to show we are not alone in the heat just in case you were feeling like you were the only one suffering everyone getting in on that heat this weekend here we go with the heat index right now but oddly enough yes it's cool but check out how early in the morning it is we're going to see these temperatures really begin to ramp up as we go through the afternoon already feels like 81 in omaha feeling like 82 in sioux falls right now that's also where we have the highest mugginess if you will dew points all the way in the upper 60s and low 70s right now as we continue with the southerly wind flow going through the day we'll watch those dew points continue to increase just adding to that heat and humidity that's out there the dew point here in madison 66 right now it'll likely be in the 70s later 69 the temperature sunshine being noted at the airport will continue to watch the sun rise after the showers and thunderstorms that came through temperatures in the 70s as you work your way just to the west now this is not the heat index at this point this is the actual temperature bosco bell at 73 right now mineral point at 72 same goes for Lone Rock Platteville coming in at 71 but here's what happens as we go through the rest of the day these temperatures begin to take off a little bit 86 by the time we get you towards 1 o'clock 90 by 430 check this out midnight 1230 it is still going to be 80 degrees. You factor in the humidity, it'll be feeling like 90 by noon, feeling like 95 as we get you later on into the afternoon. It'll feel like the 80s by the time you're waking up on Saturday or Sunday rather 103 by the time we get you into Father's Day afternoon. So do be prepared for that heat 70 to 75 this morning. By the time we get you into the afternoon, do expect your temperatures to reach 90 degrees. And then the next few days are actually alert days until we get you into Monday with the heat and humidity that we will have. Of course, we'll have uh, some showers and thunderstorms coming back into the picture Monday and into Tuesday, and that will really help things cool off below 80s after that cold front. So once we get through this weekend, that's where we can celebrate things feeling better. In the meantime, this is what I'm going to be doing. Hunter and Toby uh, chilling on the couch, beating that heat. I think that's going to be the best way for me to spend this weekend. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I think it's definitely one of those weekends that you want to like check on your neighbors, make sure they're OK, because those that don't have air conditioning, it's pretty dangerous. It is pretty dangerous. And another thing you want to do on the topic of checking on people, your pets. We often forget them, but they'll be outside in that heat if you leave them out. One of the good things you can do is just give some ice to your pets in that water. All right, Chris, thank no you. No problem. We've been asking you to share your morning with us. Check out this. Linda Kruger posted this on Facebook. No sun this morning, but a beautiful bleeding heart tulips and fresh asparagus. Yum, that looks good. Thanks for sharing, Linda. What does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag my News 3 morning. We'll share our favorites right here on News 3 this morning. It is the weekend here in the 608. And here's a look at what's going on in and around the area. Any reason is a good reason to celebrate Madison, but for the Madison reunion, it is one special celebration. Running through today, it's being called a party with a purpose and marks 50 years since the 1960s redefined the city. You can check out films from that era, including the documentary about 1960s Madison called The War at Home. All screening is happening at the Vilas Hall on campus. There will also be live music on the Memorial Union Terrace. And tonight is a 60s sing-along with dueling pianos. That sounds fair enough. Another music option around town that's calling all Harry Potter fans. The Madison Symphony Orchestra will perform the John Williams score to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets as the film is shown at Overture Hall Saturday night. And again, Sunday afternoon, you can experience the second book and the Harry Potter series like you never have before. Catch the magic tonight at 8 or tomorrow at 1. Noticing a theme here? Consider Madison's Grammy Awards. Find out who was voted the best Madison musicians of 2018 at Sunday night's 15th annual Madison Area Music Association Awards. Join Urban or John Urban hosts rather and great performances are scheduled all night. It's a celebration of the top musical talent in the city. That's tomorrow night 7 p.m. at the Capitol Theater at Overture.
All right, and as always, you can pick up a copy of this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area. Time now 551 this morning. There's a full hour of news three ahead at 8 o'clock and tonight at 6 and 10. We'll head to the Juneteenth Parade, how local communities are marking the occasion. But first, one last lesson before summer break. Not in math or science, but in kindness. It's an uplifting story you won't want to miss when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns. And welcome back at 554 for some students in New York. The school year ended this week, but not before they got one final lesson. And it's not in math or science, but a lesson in kindness. Kelly Curtin has the story. This is my rock. It says laugh often. A cat and a mouse to show friendship. And show to these four Camden Elementary School students, the word kindness has many meanings. Kindness means doing something and not expecting someone to give back to you. Kindness means to me that it's somebody being nice to you and it shows that somebody cares about you. An art project allowed kids from pre-K to fourth grade right, to paint time. an inspirational message on rocks. Outside of the building, you'll find those rocks in the colorful Camden character corner. This one's dream big. The space is meant to spread love and positivity through the halls of the school teaching kids how to support one another. They're going to have that basis of respect and compassion, and we're going to have less issues with bullying and with school violence, that by teaching them to be kind right as they start, that's going to carry with them for the rest of their lives. Principal Sharon Kirch says these rocks are part of the initiative Cougars for Character, which started last year. Kids learn good character traits, and every month a ceremony is held to honor those who demonstrate that behavior. She says this corner helps focus on the positive instead of the negative with personalized messages. The multi-sensory 
activity that it was to paint and the smell that came with it and and the talk the conversation they had with other kids the socialization it's it i believe it will live with them as the school year is almost over these thoughtful words will stay with each kid if you walk by you might see a rock and if you're having a bad day you might look at it and think wow um, mine says life is beautiful as they continue um, to grow and learn to spread loving kindness. In Camden, I'm Kelly Curtin. And another lesson in kindness today, maybe check on those that don't do well in the heat, right? That's right, it's going to be very hot as we get you throughout the day. In fact, a quick reminder, today is one of the next three alert days. Heat in the seas ranging anywhere from 95 to 102. Check on the elderly, check on your neighbors, check on your pets, along with those who are young. Don't forget to check the back seat. That's one that often leads to some tragic stories around here. But we'll be watching the heat indices here in Madison rise to about 95 as we get you into the afternoon. Tomorrow we can likely add 8 to 10 degrees to what it is going to feel like on your skin as you step outside. Temperatures will be in the record territory as well. In fact, Sunday the forecast does call for a beaten record. All right, you can always download the Channel 3000 app for weather on the go. We'll see you back here in a half hour. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.